Hey, Lauren, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm pumped to be here. Yes, I'm so glad to have you here. Now, you are a student in the Front Page Guide to Etsy uh, way back when I first started it, but I came to know you, I believe, through Instagram and your beautiful feed and everything that you're doing. So why don't you tell people a little, about, a little bit about what you do? Absolutely. Um, my name is Lauren White. I live in Austin, Texas, and I am the owner and designer of White Loft. We make growth charts. Um, ways to keep marks off your door frames and an artful piece for your home in wood, burlap, and canvas. And I've been doing that since formally uh, February of 2013. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, so that is your full-time job. Is that selling on Etsy? Yep, it is. Oh, that is really awesome. So what did you do before doing that? What was, what was your life like before that? I was actually um, in a corporate setting. Um, I was also so a technical recruiter and basically an HR and recruiting background until my son was born, decided to stay home with him and um, didn't really plan to launch a business, but that's kind of what happened. Oh, that is so awesome. Okay. So the growth charts now, what, what do they look like? I've seen them uh, on Instagram for those that aren't familiar with it. What, what, do you, what materials do you use? What do you make them out of? Sure, absolutely. I make a wooden one out of a white pine. It is literally like a six foot piece of lumber that I stain and hand number to look like a giant ruler. So it measures inch inches as your kids grow. You can hang it on the wall. It comes ready to hang. You can mark on it with a Sharpie. So that was my original product. Um, funny, when I started, like I said, I didn't really set out to start a business. My son was 18 months old and I couldn't find cute crib sheets. So I just decided to make them myself. And I decided to also make a cute wooden growth chart because I wanted one of those. And friends kept encouraging me to open a shop and I would buy this from you and that kind of thing. So, um, and that's what happened on Valentine's day of 2013. I sat on the couch with my husband and just hit open shop with no expectations of anything. Um, and since then we've evolved and added new products. Um, we've added a burlap version that's packaged in a mason jar and it's really cute um, and then uh, about a year and a half ago I launched the canvas growth chart which was just on Beverly Mitchell's blog you might know her as the actress from seventh heaven oh, um, oh yeah, wow. Lucy the little sister it was just on her blog last week and um yeah it's been an incredible ride so, um, did you, did she just buy that from you? Did you send it to her? How did that happen? Yeah, we had, um, kind of a mutual connection and I sent her a wooden ruler, um, as part of that in like February of this year and never heard. I didn't know. And then our paths kind of crossed through a strange connection and she emailed me directly with this amazing paragraph saying literally it says I am obsessed with this ruler I love it so much um, and so we're working on some future collaborations but she was using the canvas chart um, for a photo shoot and now it showed up on her website as well oh my goodness that is so awesome I mean so great because it's like you never know what's gonna happen you don't know who's gonna see something and so um, I love the maker community that way it's just like just start just start because you just you just don't know That's absolutely right so okay um, I know that you and I talked about this a little bit before but when you were growing up you have some pretty crafty parents right so you kind of grew up in, in a, a maker sort of environment I did. I didn't know it at the time. In fact, I was just talking to a friend about this. My dad um, is just retiring. He is, we call him party of one. He essentially been remodeling kitchens and bathrooms my entire life. He started with a shop in our garage where deliveries would be made of different types of materials and he would work out there. And you know, when you're five and six years old and you're just on your roller skates going around in the garage, you don't realize what you're being exposed to um, my mom loves to quilt. And so I always watched her being crafty and whatnot. But when I, um, got out of high school, went to college, I kind of took a more professional, like corporate route. I got an advertising and public relations degree because I really thought that's what I wanted to do. Worked in that for a while, um, transitioned into more of a recruiting role, um, in software and healthcare and all different types of industries. But like I said, when my son was about nine months old, I decided it was time to stay home and, uh, be a full-time mom, but uh, that didn't stick too long because White Loft had other plans for me. <laughs> That's awesome, but you do get the advantage of being home to during nap times and school schedules and things like that, right? 
Absolutely. I mean, it, it's such a, a beautiful mix that I can, you know, be able to do things like this with you, but then I can also go to gymnastics every week and watch them do those things. So, I mean, the hustle is, is there. I don't have a standard job in the sense, and my kids understand that. Like I work really late at night. I work all weekend long when I kind of high five my husband on Friday evenings. When he gets home. And then we, mom goes into work mode and they do help out. I mean, my kids are still little, they're three and six, but, um, we kind of have made it a family thing. So who knows, it might be passed down to them as well. Oh my goodness. I think that's awesome. So if anyone's listening that you're thinking about starting a shop or you already have a shop that you're just kind of, it's not kind of going where you want it to go. Just keep with it, keep going. So you just never know what's going to yeah, happen. It has been, I mean, like I said, we'll be coming up on five years in February and it was a real slow burn. And, but it was, I was kind of, I appreciated that because it let me work through how do I ship these six foot things I just created and threw on Etsy without really thinking about that? And, um, you know, how am I going to package this in the, from a marketing perspective and how am I going to continue to grow my business? So, but yeah, that is great advice. You just keep going. Um, at my desk, I have a little sign that says you can, and there's even days, I mean, come on, we all have bad days where I just feel locked up with how am I going to find this? And I look up and see you can, yeah. Um, I really am a believer. There's a solution to every problem. And um, if you believe in yourself, you'll find a way to get through it. Yeah. And you're doing it full time. And so I think that is um, so great. So now, you know, listing things on Etsy, it's not a list it and forget it type of a platform. So um, your Instagram is so awesome. Is that your primary way of letting people know about your Etsy shop? It really is. Um, I really didn't know a lot about Instagram when I joined it. I just thought it was really fun, started throwing up some pictures and it's kind of developed a life of its own. I think like my big advice on Instagram and what I do love about it is that if you can be really genuine in your posts and keep it varied. So I don't post picture after picture of growth charts. Mm -hmm. I, Good point. Throw, I throw in one, like my daughter turned three last week. So I put a picture of her on a swing and um, you know, I just try to come up with, or like, different things that are going on. Instagram stories has been an incredibly impactful way for me to reach customers. But yeah, um, I'm sure we'll talk about it later. I'm working on a collaboration with another small shop right now. And we solely used Instagram to push that message out to let people know. And it's been a success so far. Well, tell me about it. Let's jump in and say, yeah. Yeah. So, um, one thing about Instagram I love is really the relationships that can form from it. Like you and I pretty yeah. much. And, um, and it's not just with your followers, the people who follow you as a shop, but with other brands. So I'm constantly like liking and commenting and I feel like I've kind of grown a relationship. Well, there is a woman named Ariel Nathan. She lives in Connecticut and her shop is called North Detail and she makes tea towels and mugs and beautiful things with like intentional things for a home decor space. Oh, I love and, it. I can't wait to check it out. Oh, you have to, it's beautiful. She has um, her own font. And I've always admired this font. When I launched the Canvas Growth Charts um, in April of 2016, she was all about it. She shared some of my images and we just kind of became friends. So a couple months ago, I wrote her and said, Ariel, I just love this font. Is there any way we can get together? Can I somehow use your font on my rulers? What can we do? And that's exactly what we did. So right now it's the white loft standard numbers and tick marks and all that stuff. And then you can personalize your child's name or your family name in her font. Um, and this is the first time I've ever done something like this and it's been a great success. And we just, um, I'm so glad I met her all because of Instagram. I think that's so great. I, um, a couple of years ago I was doing, it was so crazy how things evolve and I tried to do too much because marketing and this business is more my main thing. And I was doing an Etsy side thing, but Instagram actually led me much like you to somebody who could make um, handmade frames for me because I was printing off Instagram images and then I was putting epoxy over the top and with some glitter in certain places. Mm -hmm. And then she made a customized framework that, um, that piece, that little canvas piece could pop right in and okay. have some home decor for people that looked really awesome. And so I don't do that anymore, but she was the summary umbrella. She still is. Oh yeah. You know her? Yeah. yeah. So she's got a great account too. And, it, and Instagram is so wonderful for 
finding genuine people who are small business owners just like you that just love collaborating. And so I think that's another tip for people that if you're feeling alone and just kind of, you know, in your own world and, and not succeeding as much as you want to, maybe find somebody, people, makers want to work with other makers for sure. There's definitely more sense of a community over competition on Instagram. And I really believe that um, because you've got to kind of find your group. Oh, actually, this is kind of silly. When I first started, you know, I had like two followers, but I started finding shops. I would search hashtags of people that I was interested in or like you know, just anything. And if I found a shop that I liked, I would literally write it down like on a little notepad. And so then I would know like a few days later, if I couldn't quite remember, I'd go back and like, Oh yes. Like Caroline Randall made, that's actually someone who based in Orlando, she makes um, cocktail napkins and like um, sleeves for your coffee mugs and tumblers and all those kinds of things. But I would go back and I think, it's just this organic thing that happens because they start taking notice of you and then it just perpetuates from there. And it, it can be really great. I mean, and then it spawns into Facebook groups made for makers. That's been a really great resource for me kind of bumping my way through this um, just to know I have a place to go to post a question and I'm thinking about switching up. Do you have any advice on hashtags? You know, all these questions. And there's probably someone who has an answer for you. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So Instagram is integral. Do you use like an email list? Do you have like a way to grow your list of people? So I've been told for so many years, like you need an email list, you need an email list. And I just didn't have the bandwidth to take that on. Yeah. Sometimes that's a hard Thing to tell yourself, especially if you're very ambitious, like I am, like I want to do it all. And I just couldn't, I knew I had two very small kids at the time. I couldn't do a list. And I also felt like, what do I have to tell them? Like I, that was something I doubted myself on. Well, this year, actually just this summer in July, I finally um, found uh, an email marketing person who's based in Canada and I got with her and I basically said, I think I can do this but I need your help. And this is how I kind of freed up the space. So now, yes, we are slowly growing our newsletter list. It's been um, just real slow, but we're gaining like a few people every day. And I love that. And I actually, it's been fun to have that different marketing channel aside from social media. Um, because honestly, I wasn't a believer in newsletters. I felt like who reads these? Who's who, whatever. And now what I'm learning, and this is, you know, it's all a learning process. What I've learned is people might not read it, but they do see it. And maybe in a few months, they're going to say, Oh, I'm going to a baby shower and I need that growth chart. What was the name of that? Oh, here it is. Wow. So that's one of the reasons we're starting to build a list. Um, and it's going really well. And I love, um, coming up with like brief content, you know, that we kind of pull together with images. In fact, we do one every other Friday. So this Friday is going to be about the North detail collaboration and what's going on. Sometimes it's silly. We did one about, um, my son starting kindergarten and how do you celebrate milestones in your life? So, um, I think yeah. it's, great because you're, it's a way to create a community as well. And in my online marketing space, a lot of what I kind of would encourage people to do is like, if you do have a discount or a coupon or a download or something that you can give away for free in exchange for the email address, but then you can do fun things like that and connect with them and um, create that community that you kind of, I hate to say the word own in a, in a way, because you're, you know, because you yeah. want to have friends and community, but in a sense you can then, say, gosh, it's my birthday. I'm giving 75% off of all my burlap or whatever. And you can send that to that small community. So I that is really, really powerful. Even um, one, this is kind of fun. Recently, one of my growth charts was spotted on MTV's Teen wow. Mom 2. Oh. Uh, one of my followers actually was, I don't watch the show, but I had sent one to Kale Lowry and one of my followers was like, is that your growth chart? And I was like, it sure is. And so we did like a special newsletter just to newsletter people to let them know like, Hey, I'm really excited about this. So I feel like these people are kind of on the journey with me yes. somewhat like, Hey, and I've gotten 
e notes back, like, I love following your family. One thing we do offer, um, which has been, it's kind of a tip and trick is, um, once a month I do a giveaway for a $50 shop credit for subscribers to the email. So it kind of keeps people engaged. It keeps people wondering, like, is my name going to get pulled? And so the last news letter of every month, we just pull a name of someone who's subscribed and then surprise, you get $50 credit. So oh, that is so awesome. Um, yeah. Okay. So that kind of brings me, um, you said that somebody saw, asked you like, is this your growth chart on MTV? Now that I've gotten to know you and your account on Instagram, I noticed that there are other people doing physical growth charts as well. Um, are you seeing more of that after you, did you see any of it when you started or is it just all kind of recent? I, you know, I didn't, but that said, I didn't really look. I really just put up that Etsy shop because my friend was like, these are great and I want to buy one, set it up so that I can actually make an order with you. Yeah. Um, so I, it was almost like ignorance is bliss. I didn't know. Yeah. Um, clearly on Etsy, there are a lot, just as if you sold t-shirts or jewelry, there's a lot of people who make things. And like, what I like to say is that nobody makes the exact same thing. So there are other Instagram um, or other Etsy sellers and folks on Instagram who make growth charts. In fact, I'm friends with two of them. Awesome. Um, we do occasionally cross paths and somebody had, um, we will ask each other questions on occasion and, and it's just nice, you know, and I feel like I'm all about being genuine and that, um, so sorry. That's <laughs> fine. <laughs> I feel like that, um, you know, it's, it kind of takes some guts to email your competitor and say, yeah. Hey, how are you shipping these things? Um, that was a question that I got and I felt like, you know, there's one part of me that just wanted to hit delete and move away from it. And the other part of me thought, you know what? It's okay. There's you know, like I always, around, right? I think about like brands that started as one small thing and have grown into so much more. It can't be done with just one person. I frequently um, partner with Pottery Barn here in Austin and I'll do pop-up shops inside. Yeah, Pottery Barn, Pottery Barn Kids. And um, I just think like that brand didn't start just by one person like slaving away making furniture. Like it slowly grew. So, and that's another point. Like you never know who you're going to meet and the relationships that are going to form from that. I never imagined when I started White Loft, I designed a logo and stuff based around Pottery Barn, believe it or not. Like that's kind of the, the people I wanted to target. I wanted to be that. That was sort of like the ultimate goal. And the day I got a call saying, hey, do you want to come in on a Saturday and sell your growth charts? Like it was, we had a couple of those moments. I mean, and I think that's fun too. So if you're being genuine and you are celebrating, even that's kind of a big one, but even a small one, you get your first Etsy sale, take yourself out that night. Because yeah. Exactly. Even if it's um, a two dollar printable that you're selling, just celebrate. Right. It. <laughs> it's so true because it's it's hard, and there are days where I think um, I try to be pretty positive in nature, but there are days when you're like, "Is this really worth it? Like, is it?" Because it's a lot of hustle. It's a lot of time away from your family, but um, at the end of the day, I love it and. I am proud of the heirloom pieces that I'm bringing into people's homes. Yeah. And that's what I was just going to say. You're making heirloom pieces because they're personalized, right? And yeah. so, you know, how cool would it be to then, you know, those kids grow up and then they have kids and, and they've got this growth chart and then order a new one from you, you know, yeah. for their new it's just amazing. I, I love that whole thing. Wow, you're making me feel good about the sense of community and also the hope that, you know, a pottery barn could call and say, hey, can you come in? How did they find you? Was it online? Yeah. It, I, it's, it kind of started what, you know, pottery barns under the umbrella with West Elm and Lake Sonoma and that kind of thing. And I was in West Elm, a friend, here's a community over competition thing. A friend was invited to join a, a pop-up at West Elm and she said, I'd like to bring you along. So I started to meet the friends of West Elm and they were like, you should talk to Pottery Barn. And to me, Pottery Barn seemed like this big, yeah. mammoth, corporate, the they would never talk to someone like me. Well, what I learned after talking to their managers and like regional managers is Pottery Barn's really trying to do a reach out. Um, as West Elm has been extremely successful at this, but really reaching out to their local makers 
and having a little focus because they know they're making millions of dollars. It's okay to have a little person come in and sell their candles or whatever it is. I don't mean little, like in a bad way, but, and that has really like almost like taken down the curtain on my view on a big brand like that. Um, it may be specific to Pottery Barn brands, but um, they're, I consider them friends now. Like I, we actually, the manager at Pottery Barn and I get our hair cut by the same girl. So it's kind of just, because you never really know. Um, I've had really strange opportunities come up just because I was friendly to somebody and it kind of worked out. So what I'm hearing from, from you and maybe some new shop owners or even shop owners that, are, you know, have been doing it for a while and just maybe aren't where they would like to be, or if they, some people out there just haven't quite started yet, you've been saying words like genuine and friendly and community. And I see that in your Instagram um, feed, you're very much you and your brand, you're not trying to be corporate at all or um and and you don't post just this is my stuff this is my stuff this is what i'm doing right. you make it so that um you're selling without selling and you know and so i think that's there's a art to doing that but not really if you're being yourself just genuine i mean i think about i think about it as someone who scrolls feeds and what do i like to see and i those ones where it's like t-shirt 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 growth chart growth chart growth chart like even though you do need to remind them um, about what you're doing. Like today I posted one flowers from an, a local florist because I thought it was really pretty. And I just try to mix it up. Like my daughter turned three last week. So we put a little picture of her on a swing and, um, or Hey, like behind the scenes, people love those. Um, I now get a lumber delivery to my house. And so the day the lumber truck comes, I make sure that that goes on Instagram some way, somehow. Um, oh, that's so I actually cool. go out in the hand. It's funny. When I first started, every time I'd get an order, I'd run off to Lowe's or Home Depot and get the piece I need and bring it home and do it. And now we're at a point where I go to a lumber distributor about an hour outside of my house and I pick through hundreds of pieces of lumber and then it gets trucked back to my garage where I still do all the staining. So it's really a, you never know what will happen, but it's, yeah, as far as like being varied in your feed and Instagram, people want to see these things and they want to know your story. So yeah, if you can keep that going and somehow portray it in little squares, you'll be golden. Oh, I just love that. I think the other key to this is patience because you said it was a slow burn in the beginning, but then, you know, just one thing after another, and now you're totally full time. And so things have just taken off. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, like exactly like you said, it was a real slow burn, a lot of sweat equity that went into it and kind of learning to manage that. Um, you know, I'm trying not to spend too much money, but I need to make sure my margins are okay. And then it just starts to pick up. And I think that comes with, you know, I try to include a personalized note in every order. And my hope is that, and I throw in like a little postcard with a, you know, percentage off for your next purchase. And I try to, I hope that maybe that person might not need to buy another ruler, but they will, um, their friend will see it on their wall and go, where'd you get that? And she'll go, oh, here, here's a postcard that came with my order. So I think it all kind of plays together slowly, really organically um, to let you grow that way. And I think some people can grow as fast or as slow as they want. In the beginning, you know, my son was 18 months old. I didn't have time to be like honing my tags and getting everything perfectly perfect. Um, but that also gave me a lot of time to think and process and figure out what I wanted to change. And now I have a little more time and now I'm able to do that newsletter and things that three years ago I could not do. So. Yeah. And I think that's what um, a lot of people, it keeps them from starting is like, Oh, I've got to do this. I've got to get the shipping stuff, the packaging, I've got to get cards and Oh, it's overwhelming. And you know, Oh, I can't do it. Or I don't know how to, when I started out, um, I would just be so excited to get a listing up that I just didn't care about what the name was. It would be what I, what I called it, you know, right. um, not what somebody would actually be searching for. And I just didn't, I just didn't, you don't know what you don't know until you know. And so it's a lot of trial and error and figuring that stuff out, but it can be done and it can be done in, you know, done slowly. If that's yeah. And it, it may sound foolish to say like, just dive in, 
but that is it's kind of what you need to do. Like I said, like I sat on the couch with my husband and hit open shop. We had no idea. And I shouldn't say we, he's been very supportive, but like <laughs> I had no idea the opportunities that would present. Um, it, and it's been remarkable. So I'd say like, if you're doubting yourself, don't just get out there and try it. And you know, like I, I don't, Etsy is just a great platform when you're starting out, it's low cost, it's simple. And there's a lot of tools to help you be successful along with the significant advertising that they do um who basically you get to ride those coattails and i think that is great when you're just starting out and you don't have a budget for advertising you're just you know sitting on your couch trying to figure out how you're going to sell your glitter pumpkins you know exactly exactly they're spending millions of dollars on advertising so yeah once you figure out what keywords they're using what they're paying for then you can kind of um, move right along. You can look at Google trends too. If you don't even know what to sell, but you have a skill, um, yeah. there's a lot of things that, that you can do the research in. Well, this has been so fun. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know we've been talking for a while and I just love what you're doing. And I love the message here that just dive in. You never know what's going to happen. You've got MTV and Pottery Barn and, you know, you've got all of these things going on, which is so very exciting. Does your husband um, work with you or is he, does he have a job as well? well he has a job. Uh, we always joke that, you know, my, growing up, my dad was kind of the entrepreneur. He had the business like remodeling kitchens and bathrooms. And my mom had the job at the school with the health insurance and all of that. <laughs> so is that person in our life? He has a job, but he is certainly, um, part of the process. Like actually we got a lumber delivery this morning. And so we'll be ordering pizza tonight and chopping up lumber in the driveway. And I need his help for that. So I love it. I love it. It's a family business and your kids are growing up in this environment as well, yeah. and potentially to be passed down to them. So I think that's just awesome. And I want to leave you with one thing because I heard this quote and I saved it on my phone so I could um, tell you about it. Um, Britain Co. is doing a conference right now called hashtag create good. Sarah Michelle Geller was there yesterday and said this, if you don't believe in what you're doing and what you're saying, no one else is going to. And so I feel like that's something to hold on to that for anybody who's like on the cusp or who's been doing it for a while, like, are you believing it? If you're believing it, they will believe it too. Yeah, I love that. And combining with the yes, you can, or you can, I think the, those are really great. Thank you so much for being here. I do have one last surprise question um, that's totally unrelated. It's not going to okay. stop you at all. Okay. But I like to ask it at the end. Um, if you were to go to a potluck, your girlfriend's house, whatever it might be, what do you take? What does Lauren take to the potluck? And I'm so awful in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> gosh, I would say, oh, we make an incredible beer cheese dip. It's oh. made with, if you can get it, it's made with Sam Adams Oktoberfest and a bunch of other very fattening, delicious things like cream cheese and more cheese and beer. And it's great. But basically that's what, that's a signature thing in our house that we like to bring. So it's not your traditional, like I'm going to bring meatballs or anything like that, but we love to bring this beer cheese dip um, with pretzels and it's perfect, especially for fall and football season. And yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love to cook and I love to hear about um, what everybody else uh, kind of makes. Now that sounds good. Now I'm craving that for the weekend. So <laughs> Thanks for that. You're too far away though, so I can't I can't have yours. I know. <laughs> well, Lauren, thank you so much for being here. I'm gonna see you on Instagram for sure. Everyone go check Lauren out. It's at Shop White Loft. Is that That's right? It. Shop White Loft. Shop White Loft. Okay, you guys. Um, thank you everyone online for being here. Thank you, Lauren, for being here. And I will see you guys in the next episode. All right.